Hello there game makers and welcome back to another VFX tutorial and this time I wanted to give you a quick insight into the newest beta which will be released hopefully very soon for everybody 2.3 and there are some pretty cool changes which is sequences and this is your little animation uh, software inside game maker studio and for example this little animation would have been painstakingly to do in game maker studio so this would be like lots of adjustments and variables and alarms and yada 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 but not now this is so amazing so i wanted to show you this and of course a little preview into the game maker studio changes which are not too big some people will love it some people will hate it Meh. Actually, I like it the way it is, so stay tuned. This is one up Indie. I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Souls and a programmer slash pixel artist. If so, if you are new here, consider subscribing to my channel because I try to upload every second day or every day a video and I was busy, so I didn't share my stuff. That would be sweet. So the first changes in Game Maker in the beta. So this is a thing which you need to apply for because here, as you can see, different icon. This is the normal icon for Game Maker Studio 2. And if you, for example, create a new project, then you are greeted with this stuff and then you're like, what the hell is all that stuff? Let's rest assured, it is not too difficult to understand. So basically, uh, Game Maker Studio changed the, well, the resource tree where you had let's say only sprites only object and then everything was just in this very very specific folder so the structure was very static you couldn't change anything but now you can you can make a little your own folder structure for example what you can do here because this looks very ugly you can do something like this like and it's gone this is the sweet part of course here this actually you cannot as far as i know uh, change because this is just quickly accessing so here you create your own folder structure which is great so we just create the asset basically this is just i don't know animation curve i will go into that in another video or for example an object a path a room uh, sequences this is what we're going to do today a little bit sprites scripts blah 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 so let's go for example for sprites and then give it a name let's go for spr nothing because there's nothing here and what we can actually do to make it a little bit more visible we can give it some underlying colors which is kind of sweet so now it is green here looks a little bit different they changed it but it is basically the same so nothing uh, too drastic so basically what you can just take away from here they just change the whole structure here which is more flexible so if you like your own folder structure and you want to do everything your way yes you can so you can do that now let's go and kill that so what you basically do you just get, let's say for example create a new group then you group everything which you like to have and well this is the the great thing for example you can group um let's say all your sounds your sprites your objects which are for example related only to your player in one group and the other one and so on for example if you get lost you have some quick searching things or you can tag your objects or things or your assets which are called now assets so you can actually find them faster so here pretty cool features but you actually want to do and make some new stuff which is the inbuilt nuclear animation software or whatever you want to call it and for example here once again that would be painstakingly to do but we can do that actually in a few minutes so this is the pretty sweet part so what is it so this thing is called sequences so you just go create a little bit new for me sequence and for example we call it first so let's make it very very fast because last time i had like 20 minutes not gonna do that this long this time so what you can actually do is put things into this animation framework because as you can see this is a new tab room workspace here whatever um this is basically a new tab where you can 
put in stuff which can be uh, sound sprites uh, objects and whatever and then you can control them and animate them and this is the pretty 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 cool stuff so the first thing we just go and drag in uh, sprite so this is just imported nothing special bam and then what you can do you can first of all modify it the way you like it this is a thing you could do before so there is no difference here but let's kill that again what you are seeing here you will get some new um, well, panels or whatever you want to call it so this one is the dope sheet which is as you can see the here are tracks and on those tracks they are kind of like time tracks so the a time starts let's say from zero to let's say this point which is now 60 uh, frames total and then on this timeline you can actually change the properties of the thing which you put in here and here you the track panel this is just means the stuff you put in then you can uh, move around the stuff so if you are doing stuff let's say in uh, i don't know adobe premiere or if you have seen some other um, video editing software then i guess you will fi find yourself quite at home because it's very very similar so here as you can see now i put in my little thingy here my gem you can have a drop down which will be relevant in a few seconds and as you can see here now i'm having a time from zero to end which is those 60 seconds uh, 60 frames and then you can actually do something in there so this is basically just a, a representation of your time and on that time you can put in keyframes and those keyframes are very important to understand because they are markers like timestamps like for example this is a timestamp zero bam but let's say for example you go to timestamp 30 what is it 38 whatever and then for example you want to change the position <gasps> something magic happens so here as you can see now if you for example do a little preview here as you can see now you we already create some movement so this is pretty sweet so but let's kill it because i don't want to do this i want to do the disco stuff and why does that work because what well, you start with the first time so here here you can preview the position where you are at with this yellowish bar shower index thing whatever that is and if as you can see here you can do that of course manually if you like or do that with a drag and drop which i definitely prefer then you can actually do stuff so here once again this is the position but what we want to do is make it a little bit more disco because let's go and make a color overlay because the other ones just did movement eh, boring so we just press the the plus button here and then we can have some have a drop down with some properties which is the cool stuff so let's say for example we want to change the color so we press here and then we have a additional bar which is called then color multiply and for now it is empty because here you have not this little diamond shape but let's say we press it or right mouse button and then add key or keyframe or whatever you want to call it and then we can actually do something as you can see now it has no color blending because it's fffff this is just white which is okay but let's get let's say for example we go into our last position point and let's go into the middle something then double press it and make it red go okay and now for example if we preview it nothing happens because we didn't set up a keyframe at this position nice so once again a position here which is red a position here which is white there should be actually one change it to white let's see if it does work it does and as you can see now the looping does work for example this is the first looping where you have a sequence it starts it ends and we're pretty much done but let's say we want to loop back and forth so as you can see now you can you already created a blinking mechanism 
which is pretty cool, but maybe you want to have it go forth and back. Press it once again, as you can see this thing is racing from left to the right and you can create this kind of color blending in between it's because this is what's happening. You're having your keyframes, so these points, which you can by the way drag and drop if you like. So for example you want to have the reddish color at the very end, so not a problem. But as you can see now there is some interpolation between the first point and, this, and the next point and then it will do, for example, concerning the color, it will do an interpolation between complete C red and C white colors, or for example, between the position if you change that. Or for example, let's go for some rotation here, start at zero, start that thing, go to the last position, and I don't know. Turn it around, if it does work, no, 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 you don't want, don't you want, come on, a little bit tricky to get that, oh, come on, he does not want, there is a little, I cannot hit it, not sure why that is, there's a little turn, ah, oh, here we go, so as you can see, a little bit buggy as it seems, but no problem. We want to have a color overlay and for example we want to turn around a valve or a thing, which is pretty cool. But let's say, okay, so we have the sequences, we animate it, but how can we trigger it? And here comes the interesting part, or let's say the part where you need to, how you can do this. Well, you create a new object because you need to create it somewhere. You can just drag and drop it into the room. I already tried it, believe me, so this is the room sequence. Eh, doesn't work because well, we don't have a sequence layer. We uh, have something which is creating a um, sequence. So what do we do here? We just go on sequence, create, nah, sequence create layer. And so if you have seen then this looks like an instance create layer because it is kind of similar. So here, what kind of layer do we want to have it? Well, our instances from here, where do we want to have it? X and Y, starting position, nothing is changing. And then the ID, so basically this is how you call that thing first, yay. And for example, now we have to, we can put it actually into the room. How do you call it? Object start sequence. Did I, yeah, hopefully I did write it correctly. And then, for example, once we start it, this is how we trigger it. You can see, bam, and it does work beautifully. And now you see the benefit of almost zero effort to change a position, a color blending, rotation, and maybe some other stuff which is pretty pretty cool, I love that. For example, if you would be having this system for my upcoming game Office Org, by the way, released tomorrow in, uh, <laughs> in on itch.io, but I will make a separate video on this thing. Then I would have saved myself lots of lots of headache and time because that stuff, I love it. So this is pretty cool for some uh, singular animations, for some stuff which you want to make quickly. And well, it was pretty painstaking before, but now you just put in the sequence and bam, you are a happy man or a woman. So this is amazing. I love this new addition. Of course, you can do some more. You can put in sounds. And um, for example, what I did for the other sequence. So here you need to touch that thing and then it triggers this animation that like, color overlay. So this is like moving up, overlaying the color and then creating new things at a specific point of time. So actually we can go into that thing. So how does that work? So here for now we just have, oh, let's zoom it a little bit. So here we have a movement upwards. Then before that we have nothing. Then we do a cover color overlay. Then we create the other diamond. So basically this is just one sprite which I'm using all the time and then Yuppie idea, 
and then they move position and then they change their colors as well because they start as green and then phew, different colors pretty cool stuff and of course i made the sequence a little bit longer this is i guess what i brushed it as brushed up too fast so here you can make it at 60 800 let's make oh, let's make it like super fast let's check it out if i can actually do that that fast yeah <laughs> let's make it 60 per second frames per second this is okay so here you can actually mess around with the speed if you want to dial up uh, to 5000 if you like but this is the point so here this is just the time where you actually add so this is the manual time this is how fast you want to play it here you can record uh, well how you can uh, you can preview it if you like then here how it loops and then the length and of course here all that stuff of course if you like you can lock it down so you can you cannot uh, accidentally change it or for example you can take that out if you don't like it for example you maybe you want to have some overlapping things because i had and therefore i didn't need the other stuff as you can see they are all the, at the same position and this one is just overlapping so i put the eye icon and then yeah i don't need that stuff and here once again right mouse button put in keyframes delete them set them automatically if this is flagged on of course of course you can toggle it off or just here make a new one or delete it so lots of cool functionalities a little bit difficult at the beginning but great when you master it because well you can you can become a new animation god after this tutorial at least a little bit and then next tutorials i will further on do a little bit more this was just a starter teaser so you understand the system behind it and then as you can see that stuff has huge implications for making pretty easy but effective animations for lots of stuff and there will be lots of videos believe me here i will <laughs> i will do lots of great things with it so see you in the next video have a good one one up indie